Well, hello, loved ones, and welcome back to Hayes Celesco's. Welcome back. I'm Levi. And I'm Jenny, and it's a beautiful day to be together. That's right. And uh, Thanks for we, joining us. We are really excited to, to have some time to talk to you. We're talking about marriage on Hayes Celesco's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, are. Right now in this season, we're celebrating um, the, the beautiful gift that it is and the blessing it's meant to be to all of our lives. And we wanted today, the name of the show, the topic at hand is the frequency of marriage. Mm. And Jenny and I are really excited that we get to introduce you to friends and people who have made our lives better. And, to, and yeah. some of them, maybe you've heard of some of them, maybe you haven't. Uh, today, we're not talking to a pastor or a song, uh, song singer. Song singer? <laughs> singer of songs. Um, <laughs> Songwriter and singer. <laughs> but we, we have some friends. Uh, Brant Kreider, is, he works in the fashion industry. His wife, Mary, they're incredible. They, yes. They're some of our best friends. Yeah. And to introduce uh, you to them, uh, Brant likes to say that when he got saved and he was at a Promise Keepers event at, uh, at the Denver Broncos State, Stadium, uh, back in the day when God captured his heart. We'll talk a little bit about that. But he, he a long time ago, used this phrase talking to me that following Jesus doesn't have to just be beige. Mm. It can be it can be explosive with color. It can be radiant, like Joseph, right? The way he was dressed. God wants that. Like life can be like that. He, yeah. He thought when he got saved, you know, he had worked in the fashion industry for a long time. He would have to, you know, he would just have to start wearing khakis every day and only <laughs> brown, only brown jackets. Like it all would have to be beige. But to discover, like there can be a, a radiance to yeah. the the color and style and beauty of following Jesus, yeah. and they really do exemplify that. Um, but but Brent also uh, does music, and um, he's he's so fun with he, he makes EDM beats and DJ sets, and literally has traveled the world uh, put, putting music to to parties. Uh, I was with him recently in New York City. He was at a, a, a private party for um, the company he works at, and and was just mixing and literally uh, all these things. And so we we thought uh, today we would talk about the frequency mm. of marriage. That's a frequency to music. Uh, to what you hear, to every sound wave, there's a frequency with which it operates. Yeah, so. Brant and Mary just enjoy life. We talk about it a little bit, but there's just an ease to who they are, to their relationship, to their family, what they do. Um, they're just beautiful people. And um, and I love, love, love uh, that they have... Um, We've had some of our like latest nights with them, like deepest yeah. conversations, Earliest best mornings laughs, with them. Yeah. just beautiful conversation and fun times with them. Well, and we didn't want to just pick people to introduce to you who have had it all easy. Not that anybody has. Right. You know, no one has. No one really no has. No one gets to. Sadly, they don't give that uh, option when you're picking a uh, life. Like, would you like a life without suffering or, or with? <laughs> um, but, but they've also, they've, they've, by their own admission have at times felt like their, their marriage was on the rocks mm-hmm. and maybe even wasn't going to make it. And they're very vulnerable. And I reached out to them. They, we had been talking cause they've been going through our devotional and loved it. And I said, we'd love to just talk with you. Yeah. Not only from the way they see life is very, very unique and beautiful and rich, but also, um, the, the open up about some of the hardships. And so, uh, and maybe, the fact that their marriage is doing so well now is a testimony to the fact that you can make it. So if you're listening to yes. this, either you're married or not, but you would say, uh, man, there might be hard times. There might be difficulties. Like what, what does it look like to, to persevere? We, we wanted to give you hope. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Lean in. You're probably going to want a little notebook or have your phone out because I was taking copious notes throughout this um, for my own <laughs> Especially at the end when Benefit. Brent gives his five pillars <laughs> yes. uh, that he tries to live by as a husband. Yeah, that's great. That's huge. So really what we're talking about is how to not just be a success at work, but a failure at home. And mm. that comes up here, you know, because by his own admission, he was doing so well in his career, uh, but was losing, losing on the scoreboard. In, the, in ways that I think his grave, his deathbed, like all of ours, will look back on and go, oh, shoot, mm. gained the whole world, but lost the soul of my marriage, lost the soul at home. Yeah. We, none of us want that, right? Yeah. So. Well, we're excited about this. Also, their wedding anniversary is on your birthday, so I feel like that's a sweet little connection. That's a thing. Um, but I'm excited for you to hear this today. Um, we just a reminder. We love hearing from you. If you, uh, if anything has encouraged you, something God's doing in your life, maybe um, how He's used this in your life. We love to hear that. So that's sure right. You let Comments us know. on social media. Mm-hmm. Love when you share the episodes meant something to you. Send friends them. Uh, the rating and reviews on uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't to mm-hmm. the video uh, stream as it comes out. Um, and thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I hope you're 
you're, when we were 11 days away from Christmas today, baby. Ooh, so we're in it. Yeah. We recorded this message, this interview the day before Thanksgiving. So we do reference that. But, yeah. But today. Today. Day before. December. It's 11 days from Christmas. Yeah. Shoot. All right. This is Brent and Mary Kreider on Hazel Lesko's. Thanks, thanks for listening. Thanks for chistening. <laughs> thanks for christening. Here she goes. So we thought with you two, first of all, welcome to Hey Celesco's, Brant and Mary Kreider. Welcome. Two of the most beautiful photogenic human beings on the planet. <laughs> oh, yes. Sweet. yes. Beautiful family. Family. Um, we want today to talk about marriage and marriage specifically that's not beige. Mm. Come on. So if we give a title today, Brant, in your honor, we're going to call this the frequency of oh. marriage. Come on. Oh, Levi, wow. That's a... Uh... <laughs> It feels on brand, yeah, doesn't it? Very on point. point. Wow, I love that. The frequency of marriage. That's great. I love it. The frequency of marriage. Um, so maybe we could just start just with you guys' uh, story, your marriage. How did you guys meet? Mm. Uh, how did that all go? Brant, we've obviously had conversation with on camera uh, back in the day. The previous iteration of Hey Celesco was War yeah. with Friends. That was kind of where it yeah. kind of started. <laughs> uh, so we talked a little bit there. But yeah, how, you know, how, did, you guys, how did you guys connect? Uh, what's the story? I mean, this is the funniest part to start with because if I do it, you're going to get the cliff note version is what Brant always says. If he does it, he could take up your whole podcast. So I like starting with Mary, getting yes. that, and then Brant can fill in and add some, a add some color and texture to it. That's a great way to start. That's the opposite for us. Yeah. Le- Levi says things like clear, concise. Yeah. I'm, it takes me just so long to, t- to say exactly. things. It takes all kinds. Well, okay, yeah. so I will embellish a little bit of the cliff note. But we, we met when I was 12. Brant was 13. Um, Mm. there was a camp that was running in my hometown and so some of my girlfriends and I um, decided to go to this camp and I don't want to date us too much but it was during a presidency that Nancy Reagan was running Kids Against Drugs so I ended up going and Brant was 13 he ended up going with I think some kids that he knew from school and we met at camp believe it or not and then kind of stayed pen pals. I did a couple things when I could like talk my parents into driving me because our towns were about an hour away. Um, so mm. I, would, I did homecoming one year. I did a football game. Um, I mean, just very scattered little chances to see each other. And then we kind of lost touch. And then my senior year of high school, uh, Brent had gone off to college about an hour and a half the other direction and had come home. <laughs> He'd come home with a guy that he had met at school who said, hey, come home with me this weekend. My girlfriend will set you up with one of her friends. And she kind of forgot to do that. And so Brent was like, hey, I think I know a girl. And whipped out the phone book and looked up my phone number and called. And I was like, so the literal phone book. The literal phone book. The white pages. <laughs> I'd have to explain that to some people what that is. My kids don't I know, know what it is. I know. Uh-uh. Um, and yeah. I had just come in. It was like a Saturday night. I had just come in the house at like 8 o'clock at night. And I remember asking my dad, I'm like, remember Brant? He's in town and wants to go get pizza. Um, and my dad said, you know, of course you can go. And Brant picked me up in his friend's aunt's borrowed car. Yeah, it was a kind of a <laughs> friend's aunt's <laughs> borrowed car. It was a car. kind of red Fiero. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, I was kind of a struggling college student freshman year and, um, rolled up to Mary's home and, uh, just watched her float out of the doorway, uh, some version of like a Ralph Lauren scene and a Laura Ashley girl perfectly quaffed in, 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 in such a, a way that like obviously struck me and, uh, was like a little bit like lightning bolt at that moment. Uh, and then, wow. and, and then it got, it, then it got serious. I got serious, and well, I think yeah, the next yeah. day we she went to Pizza Hut. Yeah, I took her to Pizza Hut. Our first day was Pizza Hut. <laughs> uh, fortunately, did you spring That's for the buffet? Serious. Did you spring for the salad oh, bar buffet oh, yeah. and everything? Just go full. I, I, I distinctly remember making her laugh because that was the currency that I had. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, somewhere between laughter and charming, I was like, "That's all I had. I didn't have any money." Yeah. Um, and so uh, we had a really cute, uh, fun dinner. We laughed a lot. It was Pizza Hut. Uh, it was like the nicest restaurant I think in that town at the time, and uh, I believe this is Midwest, yeah, right? It's in Ohio. Yeah, 
little tell yeah. now. And anyways, I think the next morning you woke up to your car with roses on it or some. That was homecoming. Oh, that was yeah. at, it, at school, but okay. um, yeah. It, but it was then. That was it. I mean, from there. I was know, in pursuit. I was he was pursu- in pursuit, and <laughs> we dated a good twelve years before we got married. So we wow. pretty much from seventeen on grew up together and went through a lot of life together and then got married um, and we've been married 23 20, almost 23 years high school wow. sweethearts well I mean, and me- meeting when you were 12 and 13 I love yeah. that I love that so much uh, I want to Brand, before, before I ask this question is there any uh, clean up you need to do on that story or uh, embellishment or <laughs> any up. honestly there's I, you, we just went through 30, <laughs> 30 plus years, years. <laughs> Right. Um, I didn't cry. She didn't cry. You didn't cry. Um, Oh, the day's young, uh, Fran. There's going to be tears. uh, I I know this. If there's criders, there's crying in the criders. So she did a great job succincting the story in such a way that, like, we're we're right there. And I couldn't correct the thing. I think you did a great job. Oh, thank you so much, Uh, Josh. Good job, Mary. What were the. Okay, so if it's Mount Rushmore and she gave. George Washington, uh, what other three presidents do we need to get those 30 years uh, more fleshed in? Of course, <laughs> we didn't live through them, so we can't get everything. But if there's three more moments, movements, or scenes in that development, uh, what, what are the, what's, who's the Thomas Jefferson and where's the Roosevelt? And then how do we get Lincoln? On wow, that? babe. A good you know, I, I think, uh, a few, well, that's a great question. Um, and uh, I think when it comes to some very anchoring uh, aspects of my life and our life together, I think the first one, in a, in a, in a real way, not, not to get uh, churchy on you, uh, but she, Mary comes from a family of faith. Like, uh, um, and her, her mom had a very, very strong faith. Uh, and I think at a certain part of our, of our journey, I encountered um, a different kind of relationship. Uh, not a religious relationship, but somebody who was like involved. And that was a mile marker, I think, uh, was a big one. <clears throat> it, it didn't stick right away, but um, the kind of presence and intention of family and and this is Bronco Stadium. Yeah, yeah, you know, somewhere in that story, you know, Mary, Mary's mother was was always a, a an important catalyst and and kind of, you know, mm. like the, the journey of discovering, you know, our faith and and the story and things like that and making it like real and not uh, like a like a religion or an obligation. Um, yes. Also, funny enough, um, you know, Mary somehow introduced me to the industry that I'm involved in, um, and so. At every turn, when I look back, she's anchoring um, moments in my life that have allowed me to become who I am today. Mm. Wow. Mm. So beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, you're kind of the Lydia uh, of the New Testament in my life today. You know, in the New Testament, Lydia sold uh, purple fabric, uh, and yet she had a heart for the kingdom. Mm. And after she came to know Christ, she wanted to... Not quit that job, but utilize that to to the kingdom. And I kind of see that kind of as being uh, what God's done in you, in the industry uh-huh. you're in, uh, and just life and and all that. Okay, so the question I wanted to ask you mentioned a moment ago, and maybe you didn't even mean it as 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 powerfully as you did, but you said I wanted to make her laugh because that was the only currency I had. Oof. Okay, so how do you, 23 years in, keep laughter? in play when you do have other currency mm-hmm. because it's great to make your, your, your girlfriend laugh, but, but down the road you develop other currencies, but how essential is keeping the laughter in your marriage? Good. It's funny. Recently I was just having a conversation and I can't remember who I was talking to, but I was saying, I, Brant and I, I mean, we can just belly laugh. He, his humor is dry. Um, and he's got a wit about him that it, I just, I don't have it, but it gets me every, I mean, it gets me. <laughs> so we laugh in the morning. I mean, I feel like we kind of all throughout the day, you know, not every day, but there's a lot of humor. Um, but it's just little drive-bys and I don't know, We but we also really enjoy each other's company. So it, it, the two of us could easily be dropped on an island and do just fine for a long period of time. 
Mm. You know, Levi, you yes. mentioned the word, you know, you, you started with this whole like frequency of a marriage and somehow frequency and currency uh, can, can be a little bit connected, right? And the let's say currency or frequency that we're operating in now, you know, um, you, of course, a lot of this is based a little bit on your devotional. And I'll share with you um, that uh, a few years ago, I met a man named Dr. Ed Silvosa that I think we both know. And um, he kind of talked to me and wrote a great book called Ecclesia. And, and uh, one of the conversations, he's older, you know, he's older gentleman, been married 50 years, beautiful, beautiful soul. And he said, uh, you know, if you want to make a difference in your marriage, bring your wife coffee in the morning and give her the first 10 or 15 minutes of every morning. And surfer. that, you know, serve her, you know, kind of give her that time, give her that space, have coffee. And although not perfect, you know, by any means, I think it's been a little over three year, three years now that we've really tried to create that frequency or currency right off the bat mm-hmm. as much as we can in the morning, have a coffee. And funny enough, there's a lot of laughter. And then there's also, you know, like real just tears and, and, and the reality of being just grateful and 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 having moments that are both like super fun and super real, you know. Mm. I love it, and we've obviously we've been able to spend time with you, and we're so grateful for that. And what I love is just the ease that you guys have, and it is. I feel like it's clear that you've just spent time together for as long as you have, and um, there's a sweetness, and there's an ease, and there's a a levity and a laughter, but also a depth. And I know Levi and I both are always just so encouraged and inspired. Yeah, anytime a vi- we a vivaciousness get with you. to your relationship yeah. that is infectious. You know, it's funny. You know, I, th- I, th- I think maybe that's not enough is said of, of, of laughter. Mm. Um, I've been watching The Crown. I know everyone, you know, kind of tends to watch that show on Netflix. It shows up on the top ten, whatever, all the time. But what has struck me in watching you know, Diana and Charles's relationship disintegrate was just the joylessness and, you know, just the, the lack of laughter. And, and, um, you know, I think they say you can tell someone's really sick when there's no appetite. There's certain things that are markers. So, mm. you know, if, what would you put on the list with laughter that are kind of like telltale signs that maybe that relationship has lost its it's um it's it's luster has lost it's has lost something of its health you know that are to you like hey when i notice this is not happening um it's kind of to me a warning sign i, I mean i've said this to brant many times but when he doesn't cry i can tell I, his heart is soft mm-hmm. and so that will keep as long as he's tearful and, and <laughs> he's already been crying this whole time but it's just <laughs> it's an indicator for me of where his heart is um that's my biggest gauge i don't I don't know what you. Think. And so, so is that? Is it fair to say, Mary? Not speaking for you, but that that's a, a vulnerability that he's showing you. Uh, yeah. That's so. Like, if there's a lack of it, it's a veneer, maybe. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think you know, when the kids were little, you know, he would get emotional, and they'd be like, "Dad, you know, <laughs> stop," or or whatever. And then I, I think so, that started to actually affect him. He started to kind of actually wall up a bit because he was getting. I don't want to say like teased by the kids but like became too self-conscious about it and and so it stopped and then it stopped it stopped altogether and I kind of remember like oh gosh this doesn't something's off like it's not right so that for me is how I always kind of check Brant and in general like it's a huge indication for me where he's at yeah and in those moments like will you just ask like or how are you doing? Are you okay? I just noticed, like, you'll just yeah. kind of check in with him that yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, if, if you asked me that question three, four years ago, I would have been like, no, we would have skirted right over that. I just would have been like, he'll recalibrate. Mm. But but we've, we've been through so much that I think now we've learned to communicate in such a different way um, that mm. I actually, I always ask, like, if anything's off or, hey, are we good or... Did I say something? And, you know, I'll, I'll kind of dive right in because I I don't want too much time to go by anymore to let things yeah. get too kind of confusing. Scab over without each other, right? That's so wise. That's so Jenny, wise. I think you wrote something in your book or in the devotional that talked about um, that you wrecked the, on the bike and then you were in a zone and then he asked a question and then you got into the zone worse. Like you doubled down in yes. that, like whatever that mood is. Does that make any sense? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Frequencies. Yeah. The wrong frequency. And so yeah. I don't know about you, but like I'm more aware than ever of when I'm off from a frequency perspective and I'm faster at recalibrating in that process. Yeah. And we're better at finding the cadence of space needed. Um, and, you know, so there's some, let's say, recent wisdom that we've kind of working with and on. And I think the, the exciting thing about really <laughs> marriage and relationship is just how much better they can continue to, to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So and that's good. what you don't see, you know, in movies. You know, it's all about meeting. It's all about that first initial. And they almost always end if if they get married at all at that point. But mm. I think you know, what, we, what we, you guys have lived, what we're discovering with with our 18 plus years is that uh, there really can be an improvement. If you don't stop at the barriers you right. hit, mm. there, it, you can really discover new levels that are so... Um, so satisfying yeah. and so rewarding, but you have to push through some hard things along the way. Yes. So what have been that comes to mind for you guys? Because you don't you don't you don't be married twenty three years without having faced some <laughs> some challenges. Yeah. What have, were, were there points when you guys were worried it wasn't you you weren't going to make it and that you've persisted through? Yeah, I mean, do you want to start? Um, um, yes, I think that uh, we have encountered a season. Um, that was the most challenging. Um, and um, we kind of uh, were de- dealing with like a, a significant crossroad of, 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 of really the, the um, poor decision and poor prioritization um, uh, that I uh, was going through at a season in life where I will say that you know, we were talking a little bit just a second ago about marriage and what it looks like. And I think I have a lot of empathy for um, uh, those who haven't been equipped to figure out how to solve problems in life. You know, um, there's generations of people who are just learning now how to handle emotional health and, you know, talk things through and um, go through different things. And and I think there was just a different level of equipping happening. Um, And so we did hit a situation about three years ago where we were dealing with one of the hardest things we ever had to. And um, one of the things that I didn't realize about what success was, was, you know, if you could be successful externally, but you come home and your marriage is a mess and your kids don't like you. <laughs> you haven't succeeded. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's the lie, mm-hmm. you know. You know, we have a friend who has a ministry called Famous at Home, right? Hmm. And so we had a chance, or I had. A, one one chance to do the whole Second Chronicles seven fourteen move. You know that scripture, um, where like if my people who are called by my my name turn and repent from mm. their wicked ways and like change, and like I had one chance, you know, and we worked really hard, and so I think you know Mary um, had the equipping um, to handle uh, that move, and it's been probably the most fruitful but most painful season um, that we're we're in a completely different land now um, and like Mm. have authority to talk through things and and understand difficulties and complexities in relationships like like we've never known before Mm. yeah Mm. wow I just think of how the Bible talks about pruning and um God's so faithful to do that in our lives. Like we'll bear fruit, we'll grow, but then he'll prune back. And it almost feels um, counterintuitive because it's like, why would you cut back something that's bearing fruit? But his whole goal for us in, in John 15, 5, he wants us to bear more fruit. And he, then he wants us to bear more fruit. And to see in real time for you guys, the cutting back or the pruning or the difficulty, but now walking in the more and the more abundant fruit that that God has for you is just so beautiful to see. What, um, 
what you just said with with famous at home yeah. i think that that struck a, a nerve for me i think mm. and i think a lot of people mm. you know have goals for their career goals for their lives you know and i think but it's easy to let that ambition and aspiration end when you walk at home and allow sort of autopilot and sort of let just letting home be what it, what it is so totally. you know what, what does it look like to to win in that way <laughs> and what have maybe been some some tweaks you mentioned one thing of very simple and very actionable that people could say hey i'm gonna t we always talk about a quiet time and we talk about date nights often but you're saying hey 10 minutes in bed just having coffee and chatting and and mm. that's a simple thing to do but what other ways have you you know whether it's in the last three years or things that maybe you do intuitively without really even realizing that that are ways that have really helped you to to get to that marriage you want that 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 not so beige marriage mm. it's interesting too i mean our kids are a little older now so when they were smaller i think some of the things that we're able to implement now would have been a little trickier or too expensive to kind of like navigate through some of it, but <laughs> totally, you know, yeah. For the most part, I mean, you guys got a student in college. You have a you have a, two in college. Two in college, yeah, that's right. It's so crazy. Fifty percent to empty you know, nest. <laughs> well, yeah. I kind of we were talking earlier about you know having fun and our friendship and everything, and I I've said to the kids, someday guys, you're gonna all be out of the house and you're gonna call each other and go, where in the heck are mom and dad? Because we are just off and running. <laughs> Um, but, I but love it. Travel together a lot. That was, you know, Brant's job pre-COVID. You know, involves a lot of travel, and and we seven continents, it, pretty I mean, much. It, yeah, it was, and it was constant. Um, and it was so much. It took such a toll, especially because at that time the kids were so little, and it was just easier to stay home versus try to navigate how to get out of there often or out of here. Yeah. But um, but now. Now we go everywhere together for the most part. You know, there's some ebb and flow to that, but um, I think we realize how important it is. Um, and I, I think I, I have a new level of um, access in his work world, which I think has been really fun for me, getting to know everyone that he works with. And so that's been mm. a, a very different season for us to be in, doing it, operating like that. Um, and then we do do date nights, so we're pretty consistent about that. We've got a restaurant, a couple of restaurants that we love that we kind of sneak off and go to, <laughs> or we go. Love um, that. I'm trying to think of other things. We walk. Oh, we walk. Oh my yeah, gosh, let me help you. So sorry. Yeah, let me help you. Help. <laughs> you know, I, I think the, 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 we walk. one of the things that's been the biggest game changer for me, and this, I don't know, I don't, uh, is the condition of my heart. Um, and I've realized, um, as a, as a, as a leader, as a father, as a husband, your home is, is, is a lot like the, the thermostat of your own heart. Um, and mm. the, let's say the season of my irresponsibility where I'm so focused on everyone else's experiences, except the one I'm giving my wife and my kids. And the realization mm. of like, it's starting with the frequency of my own heart. You know, and how I'm able to function with a clean heart that is like in love and aligned, and that all of a sudden that creates a, a sense of peace, and it all of a sudden produces fruit of the spirit in your house and in your heart and in your marriage and in your life, and that fruit is evident, you know, and like I actually have the ability to self-assess the fruit in my own life and to know whether there's love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. And I'm starting now at this season of life to actually begin to eat and see little bits of fruit. And, you know, our, our family, mm. it's tight, it's small. Our, our community's kind of tight and small at this moment. But we really felt like the Lord is like, get, get your heart in order. Get your marriage in order, your home in order, um, and uh, just work on on this frequency in your home. And um, that's really kind of the effort and work that I think that we we do and try to really maintain. And I think it's a, a frequency that now that you can feel and and is is real. You know, it's kind of like a little burning bush, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Clean. You said so keep good. your heart clean. Keep your heart clean. So, are, are there some things that have been helpful to you in maintaining a, a clean heart? 
and, mm. and doing that or that if you if you slip in you kind of notice a couple of days have piled up without that that kind of just hacks to that yeah mm. I think I mean we love to learn um, uh, we really do like n- not not over trying to promote your 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 marriage devotional but it really is a perfect thing for us and we really mm. are gonna give it away as Christmas gifts because it's a great conversation where mm. it serves us really well we like to exchange things that we're learning on and working on um, I think we're doing a nice job kind of communicating and keeping that flow and and dealing with tough things um, you know, and so I think it would really be kind of that daily effort and and that daily mm. realization. Let uh, you know, you know, how is this feeling today? What do you think? I think this is going well. Yeah. I think this is going well. <laughs> well, I think yeah. So I, I saw this guy. I, it always sticks with me. When I was young, someone had such white, clean white shoes. I love white shoes, but they're so hard uh-huh. to keep clean. And and I said, how do you keep your clean your shoes so clean? And he said, I, I clean them daily. I don't like let it pile up. And I just always think about that when it comes to our hearts in a marriage. It's like if if you wait a month, if you wait a week, even there's so many things that pile up. Stuff sits sits in and gets the residue in. But if you're daily taking care of those things, you're able to to keep it clean yeah. easier and to mm. keep the keep the bond alive, yeah. right? Absolutely. I can remember too. I mean, so we, you know, COVID for us was a gift, no question. It, it, it slowed everything down. Mm-hmm. It stopped all the the chaos of travel, and and we really, I mean, we actually even more isolated because we went to a mountaintop. This mountaintop, actually. We went to a mountaintop. <laughs> this mountaintop. For those watching on video, for those listening on audio, this is a mountaintop outside of Redlands, Redding, right? California. Yeah. Redding. And yeah. uh, it was just us and the kids. And so for two months, we lived in a house, literally just the six of us. I mean, going down, obviously, for groceries and stuff, but it was... Uh, Provisions, as they say yeah. in the yeah. mountains. But it was, Provisions. It was great. Like, you know, I remember I've told this story many times, but Hudson, our thirdborn, at one point was like, pulled me aside and he's like, Mom, I've never seen Dad this much. And I'm like, I know, mm-hmm. like, you know, many reasons. Insert dagger yeah. here, <laughs> yes. But it was yeah. just that... So this is my yeah. daddy. Yeah. <laughs> but but I can remember being up there and and you know speaking of vulnerability but I remember saying to Brant like I want you to know me. Like I want you to know me. And vice versa and mm-hmm. you know it it wasn't like a yes you know me we've been together forever but like I want you to like deeply know me. And I think that mm-hmm. we've worked really hard at that. And so you know when you asked about conditions of you know, with Brant, like his heart and how I can tell, it's like, I know him so well now that sometimes I feel like I know things almost before he does about himself. Like I can start to sense it, Wow. but I also, you know, I attribute a lot of that to the Holy Spirit too. Like there's not a moment that we don't welcome him in and try to operate as fully with him at the center of it. Okay, so Beautiful. Mary, that is something I think we need to pause on because um, I think in every couple there's going to be a sense of that. So how do you, or how have you learned to, uh, when you sense it, and sometimes my counselor would tell me, sometimes you might sense things in Jenny before she even is aware of them, but it's key the way you help her get there and because you cannot, just because you know you can't jump steps with her. You, she, you can't rush her to where you want to get to. So how do you, when you do sense that in a way that doesn't provoke a negative response or a defensive response in Brant, uh, serve him in, in those moments? What, what are your best practices on that? Well, first thing I would do is pray. <laughs> because I'm not going to be able to do it. There's too much emotion usually around those types of things when you, you sense things in somebody else, I think. So, you know... A lot of, well, not a lot, but I, you know, we definitely pray about it, and and I kind of sometimes have learned that my moment isn't necessarily the moment to to start talking to Brand about something. Sometimes I just have to let That's it so good. still for a bit. Um, you know, I've seen God work too many things t- to good and glory that seemed bleak and despair. So I'm I'm comfortable sitting on things, but um, yeah. I, Pondering it in your heart like Mary did, kind of a thing you're saying? Pondering it in your heart? pondering it and and just kind of just giving it a a little bit of a marinade to see, like, you know, is this the time to speak about this? And, you know, a lot of things can factor in, like, you know, a a day at work is not a great day, possibly, and so forth. But 
Um, but then, yeah, I just I'll, I'll just ask, you know, like I I always give it space to be answered with I'm not ready or you know this isn't mm. about you or I don't know it just I don't know that I have a perfect tactic I just try not mm-hmm. to let too much time go by but at the same time not let my emotions take over and like have to like get there and I think you know Brant's done the same thing sometimes he'll be like what's wrong and I'm like nothing's wrong and he's like baby I know you so well and I'm like then of course I start crying and I'm like okay I've asked you to know me <laughs> and then, and then you call yeah. me out on it. but you're saying you're saying you have to pull the ego away from it you have to give yourself time to humble yourself like almost otherwise you end up trying to get their speck out of their eye with your log sticking out of your eye too right that's so easy to do in marriage I also think that we've we've done a better job not reacting or but responding mm-hmm. right and mm. and the kind of let's say growth of not getting too wrapped into an, an emotional decision, but like allowing a little bit of space and allowing a little bit of time and like you know I think you know it's interesting because Mary is probably the most consistent, warm, kind, non moody person on earth. She doesn't have a bad day. It's very rare that she's in a bad mood. And it's very rare that she's overtly wrong about anything. Um, And so it's a tough, tough, tough sometimes to stand up against, you know, such a, such a, no. Um, And so she's incredibly consistent, you know, and, and she is a knower, you know, she has a great deal of wisdom, you know, and I think, you know, one of the, I mentioned to you the other day, like we, you know, in this world of marriage, we care about marriages. We, 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 we care about the, the, you know, wanting them to work and people to be happy and like have navigated through things and feel like comfortable to be able to share and talk about those things. Um, but she's been a, a giant, you know, and, and this, and, um, is, has such a heart and capacity and authority to, to kind of help navigate through, you know, these things and really does hear from the spirit in a, in a kind and gracious and wise way. Um, it's, it's, it's unique and special. Beautiful. I just, something that you said, Mary, um, my moment may not be the moment. I think that that is such a huge thing. For, I mean, I, for me in my life and, and my heart and how I react to things, I think that's such a wise statement over our lives to say, okay, my moment, what I'm dealing with right now may not be the moment to bring something up or, and, and just that wisdom of waiting on the Holy Spirit. How in your life have you cultivated that? Just waiting on the Holy Spirit. Ask, I mean, obviously you said you pray first and that's huge in a moment just to pray first is like something so many of us don't do first, but how in your life have you cultivated that relationship? Um, I mean, I think the, you know, try not to cliff note it too much again, but you know, there was a season <laughs> where it was, things were not what they they look like now they weren't great um Mm. and you know I I just I I was desperate so I was like oh god you've got to come and help me because I don't know how to handle this because I could sense that we were drifting you know in, in a way that was um at one point I was like I think we might be past the the way of our finding our way back um and I think in that season is when I learned that there's so much that I would want to control and I, I, I can't, you know, we're two separate people and I had to let God bridge the gap in some of those areas where, you know, I was wanting results. I was hiring counselors and coaches and all doing everything I could that I thought would, you know, mend us closer Mm. together and, and, get us a solution and it just wasn't and so I I learned in that season I can try with all my might but you know it might not work but it also taught me a lot too it taught me to you know to back off a little bit and and let God move you know it, it what I had what we had in our marriage if you had said if you know if you just hang in there it's gonna look like this someday I'd be like <laughs> there's no way like there's just no way. It's exceedingly abundantly beyond. beyond. Because yeah. 
because when you walk through that fire, you know, and you, you come out on the other side, it's like, we, you know, we've built something now. I, I joked about this recently. I was like, if you had told me at the age of 50 that I'm going to be living my absolute best life ever, when other people are all like, this is where it all falls off, you know, I, I mm-hmm. don't know that I would have believed that even to be possible. But but I love wow. to be able to sit here and wow. do that, which is why, you know, Brent was saying we love talking to other couples because I think we are a living, walking testimony at what God is wanting to do and capable of doing with two willing people. I mean, that's a big part of it, too. Mm. Wow. Wow. I, I would second that. I mean, watching you guys, your marriage yeah. is, is beautiful. And you guys, you know, if you look at a, f- a frequency waveform in a computer, you're seeing uh-huh. those ups and downs and how it moves and how the speed with which it, it operates. And you guys live a fast life, but watching you and the, the intentionality with which you've allowed God to heal and now to, to have it almost even like it, when a, when a, when a, Oasis grows up out of a desert. It's almost even more powerful because of the context in with it, in which is there. So, mm. couples that I've seen that have hit big bumps and and that could have taken them off the rails, but have chosen to let God heal and redeem and, and bring. It's almost like when you get roses blooming out of a wilderness. It's almost it's almost even more precious because of what it what, the pain, yeah. right? Yeah, but, and it's been a huge testimony even just to our four kids to like watch two grown wow. adults, you know that. Uh, you know, to walk through stuff and, and to, you know, operate in humility and vulnerability and, you know, be able to apologize. And I mean, we're very mm. open, but we weren't this family four years ago. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a very wow. different Wow. Wow. To, sh- to shift gears, I did want to, you know, we I think where people live is the best place to operate. So people listening, it's like, man, this is one, what, what's one way to functionally help out. If you guys don't mind, you know, talking, you keep using, I want to know Barry. I want to know brand. I want to keep know each other. You know, I don't think it's a mistake that when Adam and Eve had sex for the first time, it says Adam okay. knew his wife. Hmm. So, you know, what, what role in, if any, does it, does, it, uh, does that knowing each other and the vulnerability enhance your sexual enjoyment of life together in marriage, that gift of marriage? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, just in terms of that lens, you know, we were reading uh, your kind of vulnerability um, section the other day and talking about that. And, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about was that there was a season where it was God, Adam, and Eve before the fall, right? We kind of reference it. And, the, and that's in our DNA, that level of depth that level of vulnerability, that level of alignment, you know, between, you know, um, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, I always love to kind of um, kind of think about that pre-fall life, you know, even the depth of relationship mm. that Adam had with God. They, they, you know, God would create something and Adam would name it, you know, they had this super deep kind of creative relationship, you know. And so I think as we've evolved in vulnerability and openness of heart, you know, it just, it transitions into that frequency of like, you know, physical touch and kindness and encouragement and warmth and, and, uh, it becomes a really beautiful thing, you know, specifically around that question. uh, The only thing I'll say that can be a restraint sometimes is that we live in a small home, um, and the doors are kind of thin. And so we're, (laughs) we're creative and careful, um, and not empty nesters yet. So now you know why we travel together so much. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Hotel, totally. Hotel, the hotel life, the staycation, <laughs> staycation we need be. Man, it's real. So, so, and that, and for, for a lot of people listening, there are small kids, you know, and so maybe there are, are there any? Actually, the smaller they are, the better. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, true. <laughs> that's kind of where we're at now. Invest in some some good yeah. earplugs. But what are what, are there any things that you would ha- that be willing to share that have helped your uh, intimacy be a priority in mm. in the evolving years of marriage? You know, Twenty three yeah, years in. I, I don't know that that's ever been uh, like a a super, like a struggle struggle. Like it's something that I'm even better than. What have been some strengths then to that? I'm well. I mean, I'm like I'm very attracted to Brad. Like I have said over and like to this day, he walks in a room and I still get butterflies. You know, like I'm like, oh. mm. and we'll make little jokes like, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go take a shower. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to reinforce that, like, just this kind of 
um, almost high school sweetheart, giddy, yeah. see, you know, like you're, you know, <laughs> I, I had a call, I was on a call today and, and I was, we we're basically in the same room and I was like, Hey, I think you're cute. And, yeah, he's literally you know, texting, like texting her from the other room. And, you know, and so I, I, I think the, the, you know, as a, as a guy, we forget to be cute. We forget to be silly. We forget to send hearts. And, you know, we, we get into like kind of tough guy mode and, and, you know, you know, it's cool to be romantic and kind and warm and, and, and cute. And I think all those things really make a difference at at the end of the day. I think what, what, you know, we, we want to be seen, you know, we want to, um, we want to be, be kind of seen and experienced. Well, and I think it goes back, because Brant, you know, from the days of legends, there were the five principles. And the second one is to love your wife into beauty. And I think we've watched that firsthand, where there was a season where I felt, mm. like, shriveled up, just from lack of a, of a focus. And he's turned in that direction is all towards me now. And, I mean, I'm like, honestly, it, it, it just changes how you operate. you know. I think uh, we forget wow. uh, we forget the authority we have to evoke beauty um, mm. uh, in our bride and even in the bride, you know. And uh, mm. I think it's Ephesians five twenty two something around about words that evoke beauty in the bride. And uh, and Mary you articulated it very well. There was a season when I wasn't evoking beauty in my bride, or even in my own family, or even in my own heart. Um, and you know, I think that that kind of evoking beauty, we have permission back to Genesis. You know, we were created in the image and likeness of God. You know, we breathe His very breath, and you know, so we have this kind of you know permission to evoke beauty even in each other. You know, um, and all of a sudden, our lives become so full of the beauty that we're evoking around us. You know, it, we, we kind of get what we want and speak into in a way. Oof. Okay, now, wow. Mary, you mentioned it in passing. Brant was a part of a men's Bible study called Legends, and there was five pillars, and the second yeah. was that one. What, what are the, can you rattle through oh, those real quick, uh, Brant? Oh, what, what were those I'd five pillars? Uh, number one was uh, what was really the first commandment. What's it mean for a man to truly love his heart, with, his to, to, to truly love the Lord with all of his heart, all of his soul, and all of his strength? And, like, what's it mean for a man to have a multidimensional relationship with God in such a way that it's kind of like Adam and God pre-fall kind of relationship, you know? And how many men know other men are having that kind of relationship? Because that's a heart relationship, right? And so that was number one. And it leads into all the other ones. Number two is what's it mean, what's it mean for a man to evoke beauty in his bride? And he can do that best when his heart is on fire for God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And number three is what's it mean for a man to help his children find loving God as an adventure? <laughs> mm, you know, good. and not some sort of duty. And I think, you know, you, you know, Levi, you, you wrote a beautiful devotional, you know, and you know, it's on it's next to our bed and you know, about roaring and kids and you know, just a beautiful, beautiful mm. devotional, so so meaningful and, and so like how do you create adventure for kids? Number four, what's it mean for a man to truly be a friend? You know, like you have been such a friend to us, you have edified my life. You've bring bringing me gifts and connecting me with people, and you know this friendship is like kind of Jonathan and David. You know, you know J- Jonathan had to lay down his mm. kingship for his friend to walk into his destiny. And then number five is what's it mean for a man to do those, do those things so well that it, the world looks at him and says, "Who's that guy? He crushed." Every aspect of life, and that's a legend uh, that I want to follow, you know. And those guys have been very, very rare uh, in my life. Um, and I think they can almost be couples, you know, in a way. Uh, and so those are the five principles that we talked about and we referenced often and, and, and still feel are applicable in our life today. Wow. So good. What I'm hearing is just that there's hope for anyone because even just the hearing you Mary say I was I felt shriveled but God used Brant to speak evoke beauty in my life like what I hear is that there's hope for anyone like I'm just imagining uh, people listening who either both feel shriveled in their relationship or one and um I just see that God has something for everyone and there's actually possibility for beauty and vibrancy. And what would you say 
to someone who maybe is feeling that way and maybe is feeling like that they're not living at their full potential and they feel um, shriveled, they feel um, like there isn't hope for them. What would you say to, to that couple or to that person? Uh, I'll say a quote uh, as Mary processes and thinks of it. Mary says this thing all the time. She knows who she is. She knows, uh, how do you say it? I know who I am and whose I am. And, and I think the, 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 the hope in that kind of speaking that over your own like life is like no matter what shriveled someone might have mentioned to you, there's a God who says something else, mm-hmm. you know, yes. and that, and that is a word. And I think sometimes we forget the, our own self-responsibility with our own heart and the ability to speak things over our own heart that God speaks over us, right? And so Mary... Come on. Um, div- like, you know how Karate Kid was waxing on, waxing off? Mary had a very, very... <laughs> she waxed <laughs> on and off before she had to fight, and she was really well prepared sure. for a fight before. Wow. You know? Um, and, and, and I... That's so crazy you just said that. You're the second person today... Who has referenced Mr. Miyagi and the Karate really? Kid to me? Wow! <laughs> and I've, I've probably gone five years without that reference, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but today, a friend of mine who works for ESPN texted me that he said, "Do you ever feel like you're in a wax on, wax on, off phase where you don't understand why you're doing this? Then down the road, you go back and go, oh, God, you're so wise. You had me there to get to here.' Dang! So there's something in this, no, man. For sure. It, I, it was. It felt like desperate times. I would say I had like. Oh my gosh, I was thinking about the other day, I had stuff all over our mirror in our bathroom. Like, I I literally had music, worship music in the house all the time. I was, I was, I was renewing a relationship with the Lord that I had, but I was renewing it in a whole new way because I was so reliant on Him, because I was so like, I don't know what the future holds, um, and, and scared, you know, because I was like, this, this is starting to feel like, the ground is coming out from underneath me. My example back in the day was it was like trying to cradle water and you would hold it, but if you shifted just a little bit, you kept losing it. And so I'm like, I feel like everything's kind of falling apart. Um, Mm. But in that season, and, and I've said this now, looking back, I'm so grateful the Lord gave me those three years because I pressed so hard into Him that by the time we got to where we were really starting to repair, I was like, I know who I am and I know whose I am and we're going to get through this because you know I'm mm. I'm calling you back. <laughs> Come on. It was, wow. It was- wow guys this has been beautiful. Um, we love you. We're really grateful we get to expose uh, our Hayes Celesco's family to, to you two because you guys are our friends yeah. and, and more than that, um, like, like, like family. Yeah. And um, your marriage is beautiful, and we're proud of you. We're yes. proud of the work you've done and the way that you've, you've curated the marriage you want, that, you want, that God wants you to have and not just let it be what it is. Mm, but that, Brent, you've been a true huge. husbandman. And you've taken care of the vine mm. of Mary, and she's flourished, and she was strong at a time when you were weak, and that you give hope to everybody. Yes. So maybe any parting words, any just, hey, this last minute it's, thought, it's, or it's, any, uh, it's anything. It's Thanksgiving. Uh, we're celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow. And so, you know, I think my, my maybe parting thought is just gratitude, like, you know, like the basics of gratitude. And as you think about this word hope, you know, and like people who are feeling a little shriveled or whatever, like if they are still breathing, you know, um, if they can still mm. wake up if there's still like breath in their lungs then like the, god can do exceedingly abundant more than we ever ever could ask and hope, ask or hope and as things are uncertain places like when we start with the most fundamental parts of gratitude how grateful i am to have a, a, a partner to wake up with have coffee with have a home and and have food on the table like there is such a an opportunity of just a little bit of a personal revival and just being grateful yes. um, and it can add some air in people's balloons you know yeah and i think also beautiful you know i think when marriages start to look like they're not in a great they're bleak to some degree it's there's so much that has to happen in communication that you have to start talking about stuff and so i want to commend you guys for writing your devotional because the the questions at the end the prompting and the conversation it's those little steps they're small but they're actually mighty and that you know someone goes through that book and they commit to doing it they're going to see significant change in their marriage you can't it's unavoidable yeah. 
because they're going to start to get to know each other. They're going to start to feel seen, and you know, and that, that ushers in hope. And you know, we all need hope when you're feeling despair. So. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, well, Gosh. and I'll send you a uh, gift certificate for saying that. Uh, as soon as we finish, <laughs> let, let the record stay. I did not ask her to say that. that. was you unprompted. Did. We did not want this to be a plug fest. We just wanted to talk to you guys. So. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Love you. Oh, we love you. Hope we see you soon. And scene.